Hey, it's Tim Whalen from Whalen Jazz Lessons, and in this video, I'm gonna make sure you have mastered the basic concept of secondary dominance in a major key. Later in the video, I'll give you some very concrete ways to practice them, so let's dig in. This is a very vast topic, and I have no interest in trying to cram every possible way to play secondary dominance into one video. So I'm gonna break them up into two or three different videos. This is part one. This is an introduction. It can serve as a refresher for people, or if you're just saying, what the heck is a secondary dominant? This is a place to start. So let's digest this first video first, this first video first, and then we'll do some more advanced concepts a little bit down the road, but one thing at a time. What are secondary dominants? Before we answer this, let's take a look at seventh chords in a major key diatonic seventh chords, some people call them scale tone seventh chords. These are the chords that you can play on each scale degree of the key, and it's dictated by the key signature. The key signature will always make sure that these chords are these qualities in their most uh, you know, basic foundational form. Let's start with this, just memorization. The one chord and the four chord are major seven chords. Say it. Two, three, and six is minor seven. Say it. The five is dominant. And the seven is half diminished. Okay, one more time. One and four is what kind of chord? Two, three, and six is what kind of chord? Five is always and seven is half diminished. Oh, I gave that one away, that's okay. So, if we look at them in order, we have in the key of C, I'll do Roman numerals first and then we'll talk about the chord names. We got one major seven, two minor seven, three minor seven, four major seven, five is always dominant, mostly, six minor seven, seven half diminished, and then back up to one. One major seven, two minor seven, three minor seven, four major seven, five seven, six minor seven, seven half diminished, and then the octave. Okay, so that's the first thing. If we break this down a little further, I just wanna talk about the relationship of five to one. G7 is the five of C major. Five, one, okay? This is what we call five to tonic. It's probably the strongest resolution in Western music. Um, five, one, I mean the Beethoven symphonies. Five to one, very common. So this is five to one resolving to the tonic. As a starting point, it might be a good idea, even if it's root position, just practice this movement in different in all the keys. Five to one in C, key of F. Five to one, key of B flat. Key of E flat. Uh, and if you, you can get more fancy with voicings. Okay, that's the 5-1 resolution. Now here's where it gets interesting. Back in the key is C. Every one of these diatonic 7th chords has its own 5 chord. And those are secondary dominants. So what is a secondary dominant? Let's define it. It's a five chord of any major or minor chord that's not the tonic. Tonic means one, key of C, that's the tonic. So a secondary dominant is a five chord of any major or minor chord that is not the tonic. That's tonic. The two chord is not to the tonic. The three chord is not the tonic. The four chord is not the tonic. 
five, and so forth. This is our home chord. But with secondary dominance now, they can create movement now within a key. And you'll see these all over tunes that we play, especially standard tunes. Let's check this out in action. So C, set, C major seven is the tonic, okay? We still think of the same five one resolution, but now we're thinking of it in relation to the non-tonic chord. So D minor seven, the five of D is A. So now we can play a dominant seventh chord to get us to D minor. So we get C major seven, A seven, D minor seven. Next one is E minor seven. The five of E minor is B seven. C set major seven, A seven, D minor seven, the five of the three. So that's how we um, think about them. It, it, it's the five of something. The tonic resolution is the five to the tonic. Always thinking of what is, the, what is this the five of? Okay, so this one, five of the two, resolves to the two, five of the three, resolves to the three minor seven. Now the five of F major seven is C. So now the one chord now becomes a five of the four. D seven is the five of G, five of the G. E seven is the five of A. We skip the five of the half diminished because the half diminished that's not really, like major and minor chords are kind of a rival chords. The half diminished is a two chord in a minor key and it, it's, it's wanting to go somewhere. I think Adam Manis in Open Studio, which is great, check out Open Studio, said that because the seven kind of sucks. <laughs> He's kind of right. So we skip it. So we just go right back to the two, five, or to the five, to the one, okay? So, Let's do this all in one one uh, action so you can see it. And I'm gonna I'm gonna say it with with the Roman numerals so you can see how it how each of these works together. One major seven, five seven of the two resolves to two minor seven. Five seven of the three resolves to three minor seven. Five seven of the four resolves to the four major seven. Five of the five resolves to the five dominant. Five of the six resolves to the six, and then the five resolves back to the tonic. Okay, let's check this out on the key of F. Skip the seven, and go right to the one. Okay, one more. Let's do B flat. No, let's do let's do uh, key of D. Skip the seven, five to the one. Okay. First thing I would say is check these out in root position and go slow. Once you start to get it in your ear, you'll start to be able to really see it in, in other keys. It's so vital that you know your key signatures. This is another reason why knowing your major and minor key signatures is essential. Otherwise, this isn't really going to make any sense. Now, let's take this a little bit even more um, skeletal. I just want to focus on uh, shell voicing, just root third seventh, because this is uh, going to help with a bit of voice leading, okay? So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take root in the left hand. You can be up here, it doesn't matter. I'll just do it down here. 
and then we're going to play root, third, seventh. And what we're going to do now is we're going to do the same thing. I would do the diatonic seventh chords. in this way, and now we're also going to do the secondary dominance. And what you want to do is we're going to, the top note of these two note voicings, they're going to move upward, then down, then up, then down, then up, then down. And what it will do, it creates a melodic contour and it shows some good voice leading. So here it is. skip. You can already see it sounds more like music than just playing the four note seventh chords. Okay, so that's the first way. That's root three seven. Now there's an inversion. Bring the third up to the top now we have root 7, 3. Same idea, we're going to play the 3rd and 7th of each chord, but we're going to keep doing that contour of the top note going up, then down, up, then down. The other thing to realize is when we go root 3, 7, when we go to the dominant, it flips to root 7, when we, it flips to the other way. So like if I go back, root 3, 7 turns into root 7, 3 from bottom to top. Root 3, 7, root 7, 3. Just keep in mind, you, these, are, these are always good little things. Any way that you can learn this, the thirds and sevenths flip every time you flip between the, uh, the destination chord and the secondary dominant, okay? Okay, so back to the root 7, 3. Here's what that would look like. Let's try it in a different key. I'll do F. It already kind of sounds like music. So I would practice these in a few ways. The first is make sure that you can just play this with basic group position seventh chords. Take that through every key and then play them with your shells, root three, seven. And then root seven, third. I would only do those. For now, we're gonna deal with the two chord in a different video, one thing at a time. And I have a sheet with all of these secondary dominants with root third seventh and root seventh third in every key. It's free and you can grab it in the description below. That's something that you can have as a resource, but this can be a great way to warm up, just kind of get into the, to the zone. Warming up doesn't always have to be like, you know, technical. It could just be playing some chords like this just to kind of get you in the zone that's free for you to check out. So we'll cover more in a different video, uh, probably in a few weeks, but one thing at a time, because if, if you don't really have this, more advanced stuff won't really make sense. But you know, there's passing diminished chords, there's uh, inversions of chords, there's what we call Steely Dan Moo chords, which is really cool. And then there's just making thicker voicings and, and just expanding on it. But for now, I would say that the real key is root third seventh and root seven third. So I hope this was helpful. We'll see you in the next video and uh, happy practicing.